Seven, let me tell you about it. So this was coming off the back of the first week for ages where I didn't have a race at the end of it or a sub 20 attempt or it was just a normal week of training. And this week, week seven was, was very similar. Apart from a improvised sub 20 attempt towards the end of the week, which we will get to. This week, my target was 80 kilometers, which is about 50 miles. And I ended up running a little bit further. I think I did 82.5, something like that, four, seven, something like that. Um, really pleased with that return. And there are no, there are no short runs anymore. I, like I'm finding that I'm doing nothing under a 10K. Even my, you know, when I'm doing park runs and stuff, I still have to do, I don't have to, but I feel like I need to do the, the, the top ups, the warm ups, the cool downs, because they all add to that weekly volume. I'm basically a slave to the Strava graph. That's basically what I am, because I really, really want that gradual increase and then a drop off for deload, then another increase, then another drop off and another deload, which hasn't happened yet. And then we'll go towards peak and then we'll drop off for a taper. Now, taper is something I still haven't decided how I'm going to run, uh, do it yet. I might do a two week taper instead of a three week taper. Um, because as you know, I'm not following a training plan. I'm just, I wouldn't say making this up as I go along, but I basically am. I know the volume I want to hit during the week. I know the key sessions that I want to run. I know the long runs I need to do. I know, for example, a couple of days in advance or a week. I know if there's a park run I want to do or a hard 5K. I always do my track sessions Wednesday, do a double day Wednesday. Um, and then I've been doing these 10K hilly runs on Wednesday morning. So I know pretty much how my week shapes up. I just have to make a few tweaks as the week goes on. And that's the way I like to train. So we started with a rainy, wet run around Worcester. Oh, it's uh, Monday. And historically on my training blocks, I always take Mondays easy. And today's no different. I wouldn't say I feel absolutely battered from yesterday's uh, long run, but I can definitely feel it. I mean, I'm not sure if it's just yesterday or cumulative fatigue from the last couple of weeks. It probably is more that than anything, which is why I'm on this run now. Yes, I'm getting a longer run than normal, probably going to be about 13k, 14k, about nine miles. Uh, but the importance is the effort and the speed is nice and nice and chilled, nice and slow, nothing too difficult. So yeah, here we are Monday, dodge the showers, dodge the rain. Somehow it's been horrific today. I'm just glad that I can get out and run today. I managed to finally get out today as it's been raining non-stop. Slightly longer run than planned slash needed, but happy that it all felt so easy. Wore my Nova Blast today and forgot what a great shoe they are for easy days. That is true. I've stopped wearing my, easy, my, uh, my Nova Blasts. And I need to wear them a bit more often because they're really, really good. I've got a, excuse me, I've got a good couple of um, easy day options. I've got my Pumas now. Um, the Socanese are so good. They're so, so good. I really hope they never die on me. I love those Socony Endorphin Speed 3s, the pink ones that I've got. And I've also got the Nova Blast. So then moving on to, to Wednesday. But before I got to Wednesday, went for a dog walk on Tuesday and got stung by a wasp. 
I haven't got stung by a wasp since I was about eight. Couldn't believe it. And Daisy properly stitched me up because we went walking through this field, we never walk up, and I could see she was getting irritated and something. So all these wasps were landing on her harness, fortunately, not her. So I don't think she actually got stung. And I could see her getting irritated. I was wondering, I ran up to her and said, what, you know, what are you playing at? What are you doing? And then she just ran off. And then about seven wasps ran at me. I thought, okay, here we go. 5K pace to get out of here. And I was just legging it through a field and one stung me on the bonce. It literally stung me on the back of the head. And it hurt. It really genuinely hurt. So I was cursing and doing 5K pace at the same time. Uh, it was all good training. And then Wednesday came. Favourite day of the week when it comes to training. It's a double day and we started off with a really good sunrise run. Me and Daisy good headed day, for Daisy. the Mulvans first thing Let's on Wednesday. Go. Eleven and three quarter k's done. An hour and ten of running. And if you don't put hills into your training, you definitely should consider it because they're hard, but they just make you feel so good afterwards. And the more you do it, the easier they become. Like I'm sort of jogging up hills that I couldn't even walk up now and occasionally yes I do have to have walks but you know that's part of it and the, the, the muscular benefit that you get from hills as well is is a bit of a two for one scenario so you get the cardio and you get the muscular workout which is good so yeah stop dodging hills get them in your weekly your weekly run cycle. So that's us done. How do you feel, Days? How do you feel? She could easily do another 10k now. Easily, maybe even more. But yes, that was fun. And now it's time to go about my day. That one was an 11.75k run with an elevation gain of 338 meters. So not quite as much as last week, uh, but I ran slightly further. Um, and I did it in one hour 10. And my, my average pace, not even my gap pace, my average pace was 5.58. My gap pace was 5.21. I can't believe it, because that's pretty quick for hills. So I think I might have been overtraining a bit or getting a bit carried away. Uh, but that was a really good morning spent on the hills. And yeah, just, just another great hill run. And I'm just loving double days at the moment. 
And then Wednesday evening happened and of course I headed over to the track with my new club, the Black Pair Joggers, which is a session that I just don't miss anymore because it's I'm finding it like a really integral part of my week and I'm really genuinely enjoying it. And this week, it was quite a hard session this week. It was three by 800 at 10K pace, 60 seconds off, walking recoveries, fortunately. <laughs> then it was one hard 400 meter at 5K pace with two minutes off. And then I did three sets of that. So my laps for the, for the day, Again, I was super, super pleased with, considering I'd just come off the back of that hilly run in the morning, I felt quite, quite fresh, quite good. So the first, the first two sets, I sort of did a deal with myself, don't push it too hard. If I've got anything left, third set, we'll go a bit harder. And first set, the 800 meter rep was 323, second one, 325, 326. That's around about 410, uh, 415 average pace. Um, for in kilometers so in uh, in 5k terms that's about 21 minute 5k something like that that sort of pace it's fairly nimble it's fairly quick and then the 400 I wanted to dip below the sub 20 target which were which was a 134 400 meter lap which I was really pleased with again 355 average pace so 620 618 per mile um, second rep second set 324, 324, 326. So slightly more metronomic there, slightly tapping into some good paces. Then the 400 was slightly quicker, 133, which gave me a 350 per kilometer average pace. And then the third set, I just don't know what happened. I just thought, yeah, let's just, let's go hard. So 310, 311, 312. So somewhere between a 350 and 355 average pace, which is sub 40, 10 minute, uh, sub 40, 10K pace or sub 20, 5K pace. So it, it's, it's a lot quicker than I normally run. And then the last 400, I wanted to see how quickly I could do it. And I managed to get around in 128. It's a 338 pace. So I'm finding track sessions are really, I'm just getting around the track with a little bit more speed now. And I just love the feeling of just going hard on that last rep, if I can, if I've got anything left. It's just a really nice feeling just to give it everything uh, and go hard on that last, that last rep of the night as the floodlights of being switched off probably because we're being kicked out. Day off Thursday, as always, and then Friday was a steady and easy run. Now this one I, ran, I went out with Daisy and I made her crack the whip a little bit. We ran a little bit faster than usual. I went out a bit fast and I decided to keep alternating the pace between steady and easy, doing three kilometers of each. Finish with one marathon pace kilometer up the hill. So basically we did 13K and on that 13th kilometer after the you know four by threes had finished, I just thought, yeah, cool, we'll do one marathon pace up the hill. So um, yeah, finished with a 4.43 average pace for that kilometer, which is exactly where I want to be. So really pleased with that run. So then Saturday came and, well, I forgot to mention that Thursday, not only was a day off, but it was my birthday. So I'm 39 years young. And I wanted to make the closest park run to my birthday a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a thing. And I thought, well, in try, instead of trying to go to travel around the country and do an actual sub 20. So I haven't had to go at a sub 20 5K since Bushy. So it's about a month. And I just thought, let's do one of the hardest local courses and see if we can get anywhere near 20 minutes. So I did the Worcester Woods course, which has recently changed uh, the, the course. The course has changed and it has become slightly easier. Um, there is more woodland in there and less cross country fields. In fact, there are no cross country fields anymore, which is just music to everybody's ears. And there's more woodland running. There's, there's actually more downhill. Um, there's a bit of uphill course, uh, but it's just a really nice, a really nice course to run. That is going to be a separate video. I did a lot better than I was expected. I actually did really quite well. So I'm looking forward to putting that video together uh, because that was that was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, we did a warm up uh, and then uh, the 5K itself, but that's all the running I did on Saturday. And then Sunday, 
was a long run day and I decided to do just easy because uh, the weather was a bit chilly and yeah, I just, I woke up. Here we go, I'll just read you my notes. So we, Valencia week seven, easy long run. I think I'm getting a cold. Asthma coming out to say hello now on the cold mornings. Glad that one's over, to be honest. On to week eight and Cardiff, Cardiff half prep. Well, it's Sunday and it's long run day. I'm feeling a bit rough, to be honest. Uh, not for the first time this training block. But I think getting all these miles and kilometers in might have something to do with it because marathon training is bloody hard and it's freezing right now I can't believe I didn't bring a coat and I feel like I'm getting ill what am I playing at why have I not gone back for a coat but anyway I'm too stubborn hopefully 25k uh, today, 15 miles, um, no pacing plan, just going to make it up on the spot, maybe I'll put a bit of steady mileage, so some steady miles and K, I can't talk, oh god I'm in trouble, so I might drop a little bit of marathon pace, no I won't, who am I kidding, I don't even think I'll put any steady speed in today, I think I'm just going to keep everything easy. So, yeah, I don't know. As it goes on, oh God, look at this. What are we doing here? Straight down the middle. As, it, as the run goes on, maybe I'll get a bit quicker if I feel better, but otherwise, I might just try to stay disciplined and keep it easy. This is ridiculous. This is so wet. Okay. Just got to concentrate today, I think, and uh, not overexert myself. So I'm about 12 and a half k in now. Uh, feeling all right, feeling a bit better. Legs still a bit tired. Okay, there we go. We're at 13 k now, so 12 k to go. Yeah, legs feel a bit better. Breathing is just a bit tight, like, as, asthma, as an asthmatic. This happens every time, I swear, the seasons change. I know it's a cliche, but when it gets really cold like it is today, probably should have come out with a jacket on, to be fair, because there's a bit of a cold northerly wind, and uh, I was already feeling a bit under the weather, so, yeah, maybe a bit silly of me. But we got to move. So, I'm uh, determined to get this run done because I think I can. What, what it is with my asthma, I mean, I have, my asthma's got better as I've got older. Like as a kid, I was blue lighted a fair few times. Uh, but then as I've got older, um, it's got easier, but I'm still, it's still very necessary for me to have a preventative every day and the blue reliever which you've probably seen the ventilin and uh, just try not to touch that because that thing is like a drug you can get really dependent on that so I just uh, live on the reliever but such is life you forget to take it sometimes because you feel okay and then all of a sudden bang you wake up you feel a bit chesty and a bit short of breath which is not a nice feeling so I'm going to shut up now There we go then, lap 25, 25 kilometers done. I don't know what that is in miles. It's not far off 15 miles, but uh, yeah, pleased with that. Considering after a K or two, I couldn't even breathe. I could hardly breathe properly. But uh, it's funny actually, I, uh, please, I know this is obvious. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not an expert in asthma, but having had asthma my whole life, I almost feel qualified to say that exercise is really beneficial to asthmatics. However, please don't take my word for that. If you do need help with your asthma, then seek medical advice. But hiking, swimming, things like that, really, really good for your, uh, 
for your asthma. I find just easy, nice, nice, easy running has just been an absolute godsend for my running. So somehow I managed to get round today without an inhaler and I actually feel a lot better now than I did when I first started. And the pace didn't change at all. I kept it easy. I didn't do any steady marathon pace or any of that, any of that stuff. So yeah, just really pleased that I didn't completely capitulate and fall to pieces. Uh, yeah, so Sunday long run done. It's a good, good week of mile, a good week of miles and kilometers or kilometerage. I've, I've said mileage and then said my uh, mileage in kilometers, but I don't think kilometerage sounds very good, does it? But a good, a good uh, week of volume banked. And that's week seven. Next week is week eight. Then that means we'll be halfway this time next week. This time next week, I'll have just finished, all being well, the Cardiff Half Marathon. Now, I don't know how to run that. I don't know whether to run it steady at marathon pace, maybe try out a marathon kit, maybe try out marathon shoes, or do I just go hard and just try and beat my Worcester time um, and see if I can bank another 135 or lower half marathon? Because I think that would be a big confidence booster, you know, to have had a 5k PB and a half marathon PB and maybe a second one, maybe, um, within the first half of marathon training. So, yeah. End of week seven. In good shape, I think. I was on struggle street so badly i just couldn't get going um, my breathing felt really bad asthma didn't feel great and i just thought should i just abort this long run and just just go home but i just thought no you're a slave to the strava graph you can't do it you've got to get this done so the deal i did with myself was let's just run the whole thing easy no steady miles no marathon pace no you know it, no no anything and um it was a good decision because the route was not too hilly by long run standards around here 255 meters of gain but there were a few hills to attack which naturally slow you down but i was really pleased that again i managed to just get into this rhythm after a while came in within a, a 556 per kilometer average pace which is again just where i want to be just below that six minutes that 30 minute 5k pace, which is where I like to sort of keep my easy pace around there. And uh, yeah, it's just funny how I finished the run and my breathing just seemed to go back to its natural state. So for me, exercise is really quite good for my, for my asthma. I don't quite know the reason why, but since I've gotten into exercise, my asthma has improved a lot might have been a little bit reckless of me going out having felt a little bit wheezy but you know you know your body don't you you know what you're capable of and obviously seek med medical advice if you aren't sure um, but that's it that's the end of week seven and that took us to i'm pretty sure that was 80 is it 82.5 as i guess 82.47 with 949 meters of gain, so very similar to last week. And again, the build is building, the graph is going up, and there's gonna be another couple of weeks of build before another deload, and then we'll be heading towards peak. And I can't believe we're coming up to halfway through this block already. But what I will say is, I'm feeling the benefit on the track, I'm feeling the benefit definitely on the hills. I'm just feeling more comfortable when I'm attacking hills and attacking speed as well. So just feeling a lot more confident with my running since this block. So I love, 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 love being in a training block. I just feel so fit and I know that I've got another eight weeks ahead of me to get even fitter. Next week at the time of recording this, on Sunday actually in a few days time, I'll be racing the Cardiff Half Marathon, which I'm so excited for. I don't know how to run it, if I'm being honest. I don't know how to run it as a marathon paced effort. I don't know whether to wear my marathon shoes I'm going to wear. I don't know whether to wear my new Alpha Flies, which I've just bought from Vinted, uh, which are a bit of a gamble at the moment. Uh, do I just go for a PB? Because I've got the dream time of sub 135 for me, which was the target. Uh, for Worcester so do I just throw caution to the wind and just see what happens and just see if I can run a really good half in Cardiff or do I play it safe and just use it as a training run I don't know so thanks for sticking around those of you that are still here to the end of the video um, run the red line have a look at our podcast have a listen see what you think 
take us out with you on your long runs. You might just enjoy it. It's a, a bit of a balance between running chat and talking about chocolate or talking about, you know, nonsense. What actually do we talk about? Which Italian general is perhaps best known for contributing to the unification of Italy? Shall I give you a clue? Lead singer of Take That. Or from the back in the day, Take That. <laughs> Gary, Gary Barlow? No, it's, well, it's not actually, well, yeah. So the first bit, yeah, is correct. Oh, Gary Baldy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The Italian general, Gary Barlow. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Have a listen. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And I'm, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Hopefully. I'm also on Strava and Instagram for those of you that don't already follow me. And also here on YouTube. So I will see you guys on the next video. Take it easy wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Ta-da. It's on, Andy! Yeah!